Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Cuff. I am the business manager of the William Penn School District, and I welcome everyone who jumped on board to our Long Range Facilities Master Plan Vendor Forum. Um, what I'm, we're going to do is we're going to go through the process. Um, the district is in, a, is in a fortunate situation that we're able to start doing some long needed um, improvements within the district, um, one being Curve Field, the other being East Lansdowne, as well as Evans Elementary Schools. So before we get started, um, what I'm going to do is I want to bring the slideshow up. And then I will share so everyone can see. So just so everyone is aware, this, um, this forum will be recorded and it will rest on our district website for anyone who is not able to join today. They will have the ability to come back at a later time, review the information, and they can um, submit, you know, submit in a request or um, submit their proposal accordingly. Okay. So let's start. So right now on the panelists, what we have, we have Mike Kelly, who represents KCB Architects, and they are the main, um, the main uh, point, uh, initial point person right now for our Evans and East Lansdowne projects. We have Mike Rufo, who represents Mid Atlantic Sports Construction. They are um, the prime contractor um, for a build and design for Kerr Field. We have Sharon Montaigne, who's uh, a representative from our solicitor, um, Sweet Stevens, Katz, and Williams. Um, board President Monique Boykins, um, Property Chair Jan Tong, Property um, Property Committee Member Bill Callahan, Rob, Mr. Robert E. Wright, Senior Property Committee as well as Jim Corkery, Assistant Principal to High School, and Rap Curry, our Athletic Director. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a quick discussion on our contractor selection and the parameters that we are bound by as a school district. You'll, and again, I'm not gonna read through every point. I think, um, again, this will be available on our website. The, the video will be there available. Anyone can go back at a later date and review it as they, as they see fit. Um, but I'll read the first one. Pennsylvania requires open bidding for all public school projects. The award is required to go to the lowest responsible bidder and school as stated in the school code section 751 and 807. So as we go through this process, you'll see that basic most construction projects have what's called a, a prime, who's the, the major um, vendor, and then are able to have subcontractors. So while the similar, this scenario is slightly different. So with Kerr Field, our prime has already been selected, which is um, the Mid-Atlantic Sports, and they've been selected through the TIPS program, and we get further down, Mike will explain what that is. But all, right now, with the with Evans and East Lansdowne, what we're doing is we're in a process now where we're gonna put a we'll put bids out for the primes. So you'll see here these, in, in, Bullet number two, it will go through what is a responsible bidder. It goes through the bonds, general insurance, experience in the public schools, compliance with the school district policy. And the district also has the ability to exclude anyone who has been removed from one of our jobs before. Um, we will hold the contracts with the prime vendors. We will not hold the contracts with the sub subcontractors. Subcontractors, their, their contract will be with the prime. So basically, it's going to be their responsibility to make sure the, the subcontractors are doing what they're supposed to do for the district's benefit. Um, and with both scenarios, with the Curfield as well as the Evans and East Lansdowne, we will, we will have pre-bid meetings and walkthroughs of the facilities. Okay. And also, if anyone has any questions, you can drop your questions in the chat and we'll be able to we'll answer those questions as we go along. So the first area we're going to talk about is Curfield. As I stated before, the board approved Mid-Atlantic in July of 2022 as our design and build the prime contractor. So going forward, what Mike, I mean Mike Rufo is here to represent Mid-Atlantic, what he's gonna do is he's gonna briefly go through what are the expected subcontractors that they, subcontractors that they are looking for and what specifications they're gonna need to be able to be a part of this job. Also at the end of Mike's um, discussion, He'll have an area where that those he'll give instructions for those who are interested to become subcontractors, where and how they would um, go forward. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mike. Great. 
Thank you, Jeff. Again, my name is Mike Rufo, Mid-Atlantic Sports Construction. Um, we're out of Conshohocken, Pennsylvania, um, and we're the prime contractor here on Curve Field. Um, we will be soliciting um, bids for subcontractors for certain trades. Um, I have provided Jeff a list, and I believe it this it's in this um, in this PowerPoint, which I won't go through them all one by one, but I'll give you a, a kind of an overview of what they are. But you can always refer back to this to see uh, see what we're looking for exactly. I, I think it's important to say I'm a, a Lansdowne guy. I grew up five houses up from what was Lansdowne Alden is now Penwood, and you know a, a lot of our roots go back to Lansdowne. We really do want to work with local vendors from from the uh that, that, that feeds the school district very important to us um so you're gonna you'll see <clears throat> if you page through this there are different trades having different requirements and, and we've listed what those requirements would be and the reason that some of them are different um requirements for instance you know site work is a very very large contract um and um you know the waterproofing on the building is not so large so we didn't feel that those requirements would need to be the same for for both so we did give a detailed list of each um of each trade we're looking for and what those requirements would would need you know the larger one you'll need proof of bonding capacity at 100 percent, and the very small ones we're not requiring a bond on um all contractors will need to be you know uh, have a OSHA certification um and Excuse me, and then there's some uh, other small requirements for each trade. Um, we will be looking for site work, earthwork um, contractors, fencing, sod irrigation and landscaping, um, asphalt paving, demolition, masonry, um, framing contractor, um, gypsum wall board, waterproofing, siding metal, and again, these are all on this um, on this list. And then roofing, plumbing, mechanical, and painting. Um, our anticipated timeline for vendors <clears throat> tonight's meeting obviously kick it off with the vendor forum. Um, we're asking that subcontractors submit their qualifications uh, to us by the twenty fourth of October. Um, we will have some conversations with the school and we'll get back to everyone um, by the 4th of November. Um, and then we're thinking right around the 14th of November, we'll start going out soliciting bids for the different pieces of the project. Um, our overall schedule, the, the fall, um, we're, we're in kind of our, our site studies, our design, our engineering, and we'll get our, our process going for the bidding. Um, the winter and early spring, we're looking for our local and state approval. So that process we're thinking six months. Um, it would put us right around the beginning of April of 2023, where we would mobilize for construction. And then we kind of have two milestones to complete construction, the completion of the synthetic turf field and for use for the football season in 2023 and the rest of the project finishing up in November of 2023. And that lag or delay is there's requirements in the asphalt paving and, and curing times and things like that that are really out of our control. This schedules, this schedules um, you know, um, contingent on approvals. And, and I think we all know, anybody in construction knows those approvals sometimes can take you astray, but our, our target is that the 1st of April to get started and, and uh, we'll push it to that point. We do have contact information on the website. It, it, as, as you can see, um, you know, name the companies, New Land Sports Construction, the email info at um, MA Sports, and then a telephone number as well. Um, it's about a... Um, I think it's about everything I have right now, Jeff. I'd be happy to answer any questions that, uh, that, that, that are out there. Okay. So I, I want to recap a little bit what Mike had talked about. So one of the important things, one of the focus we have for this evening is to basically put it out there for all, for vendors, particularly local vendors and local people who are interested in putting in their applications to being a part of this project. So the information to contact Mid-Atlantic is there, the email's there, and the telephone number is there. 
We will be meeting with Mid-Atlantic in between October 24th and November 4th as they review a lot of the applications or a lot of the submissions that are coming in. And then we'll come back after the contact of the um, subcontractors in the early part of November going forward. Okay. So again, if you know anyone, this will be video. This will be on our website. You can go back through the slides. You can review the information. You can pass the information along. And we're encouraging everyone to be a participant in this process. Okay. If I, I don't see anything in signature for questions. Hands up. So I will proceed on. So next, we have the other phase of our uh, facilities master plan is work that we have planned for East Lands down in, in Evans Elementary. Um, a lot of what we're doing is a result of our facilities master plan study. And these were two of the buildings that were indicated that have a had a higher need than others. And a lot of the work will be a lot of the, and I'll, we'll go through the scope of it, but it'll be a lot of work with ADA compliance as well as HVAC upgrades in these facilities. So you'll see right now the board approves KCB Architects back in March of 2022. Their contact information is listed here on this page um, for anyone who needs it going forward. So and I'll turn it over to Mike Kelly, who is here from KCBA to run through the scope and run through the needs that they're looking for for the for their prime contractors and how the subcontractors will work from there. Thanks, Jeff. Um, this list that you're looking at here kind of sums up uh, the summary of uh, the work between both buildings. There's a lot of similarities, uh, but there are a few differences just between the different challenges of each building. Uh, for example, at East Lansdowne, uh, that uh, project will be getting all new exterior windows, uh, as well as a new uh, ramp out in front of the school. So there's a little bit of exterior work there. Um, all the projects are getting uh, all new HVAC, um, ceilings and lighting, things like that. Um, those are all things that uh, are very similar. Both have in elevators that are being installed within the existing building. Uh, there's no um, occupiable additions to either one of these uh, either one of these projects. Um, so again, you've got um, two two schools making uh, together making quite a large uh, project that we hope uh, certainly that uh, a lot of vendors and contractors will be interested in participating. You go the the next slide again, as as Jeff had shared before. Um, there's a lot of um, this, this bidding is a little different than what Mike had just described for uh, Kerfield. Um, here we're, we're um, required to use um, lowest responsible bidder. Um, that is part of the Pennsylvania uh, procurement codes. There will be four different types of contracts uh, that we'll share in the, in the next slide. Um, so there are some things that we are uh, beholden to, again, from the state regarding bonding and insurance and experience, things like that. Um, one thing to note on, on this page is during the bidding process, um, the district will be looking for prime contractors. So that's the, uh, the larger um, contractor to um, uh, be hired directly by the district. That was, those prime contractors uh, would then have um, the opportunity to bring in multiple subcontractors. So for instance, a prime general contractor will most likely have a, a flooring contractor, a, a window contractor, a ceiling contractor. So there's a lot of opportunities um, uh, as subcontractors to, to meet these prime contractors. We provide a list um, on our website of every prime contractor that is picked up for all the four major primes. Um, so feel free to call our office, feel free to find uh, that link on, on our website. Uh, and it's, uh, Jeff's got that right there he's pointing to. Uh, that'll take you to, hey, look at this. These are all the projects that we have out to bid right now. Um, and you can click on details and that'll show you everybody that um, has picked up. Um, and we would share who the winning contractor is uh, and it also provides some uh, estimated costs and things along the way. So this is a great resource for everyone to know um, who they can talk to about uh, participating in the bidding process. So like I said, there's, there's four main uh, contractors uh, that would be selected for um, these projects. This will be one bid for both projects. Um, again, trying to make um, uh, two projects seem a little more enticing for everyone since there's um, a lot more scope there. Uh, again, general contractors, doors, windows, flooring, things like that, mechanical contractors, 
Um, both these schools are getting brand new HVAC systems uh, for electrical. New systems mean new panels and new distribution. So there's a lot of um, code required uh, upgrades to the electrical system, just like there's a lot of code required upgrades to uh, plumbing. We're adding some new uh, handicap accessible bathrooms uh, and some new fixtures throughout. So there's, there's a lot on both of these projects uh, for people to participate. So our, our dates here, we're gonna have, um, uh, uh, the bids will be released November 10th. We'll have a pre-bid walkthrough. And so with, when we release that on the 10th, um, that'll provide the information for the walkthrough. Again, it's gonna be at both schools. Um, we'll probably start at one, have a little bit of a speech, uh, walk through uh, one school and then uh, invite everybody to come over to the other one. They're only a, uh, a few blocks away, which is pretty convenient. Um, bids will then be due on the 8th of December. Uh, we're going to review the bids with the with the school district on the 13th. Uh, there's a board meeting on the 19th, so you would have a notice to proceed um, just before Christmas. Um, and the important part to note here is the construction period. We're looking at both summers and the entire academic year next year. That is far more time than you need to um, uh, construct and and do these portions of the building. But we know that lead times on equipment is so far out. Uh, that there's certain things that we'll be able to achieve in the summer of 23 uh, and some things just equipment wise that we won't get until the spring of 24 so we're going to provide some phasing uh, and, and ability to uh, work that second summer to finish the job so there'll be um, a lot of things to accomplish during both summers and some things uh, during the um, nine months of, of academic year as well um, we want to make sure that we're giving contractors plenty of time to secure um, any materials that would be considered long lead times. So is this us? Yep, um, yeah, so this is what I was saying before. Um, companies that do wish, um, when we're talking about prime contractors now, um, those companies uh, that do wish, uh, there will be pre-qualifications as well. Um, a qualification statement just talking about um, projects that you've worked that are similar in the past uh, and making sure that uh, you're able to achieve all of the bonds and uh, insurance requirements. And again, um, my name is Michael Kelly. Feel free to contact me or, or look at our uh, website for bidding information once the, uh, the project goes out to bid. Okay. Thanks, Mike. So what I'll do at this point, I'm just gonna recap um, what was discussed. Um, again, we have two major projects, well, actually three major projects currently existing. Um, the goal is, again, for the curfew is to get the subcontractors in. The information is there for Mid-Atlantic on who to contact, what, what we're looking for or um, to complete the project at Curfield. Also at East Lansdowne, as well as Evans, again, looking for the four prime con the four primes out there, and then the subcontractors will come underneath them. And again, so the opportunity is there. If someone still would like to be work on these jobs, they can submit information in. If they, even if they're not the sub, they can submit information to Mike, I'm sorry, both Mike's, the Mid-Atlantic as well as KCBA, to have their information passed along as information for the subcontractors or the general contractors for the East Lansdale and Evans um, projects. So there's our goal. Our goal is to get everyone involved, to get a lot, particularly a lot of local people. That would be ideal. Um, this is a project that we're looking to achieve a lot of goals. One, to, to make everything look, have just to be the marquee of the district, but as well to, to have a win-win where we actually, in, we actually bring in local vendors and local contractors and that's, I think that's a, that's a win-win for everyone involved. So at this point, I'm going to stop and I'm going to see, I see we have one hand raised up. Um, let me see if I can uh, allow Mr. Brock to talk. Mr. Brock, you had a floor. Uh, yes, hello. Jackson yes, Bond. sir. Okay, uh, Steve, I tried to ask the question on the uh, curve field, but I, it, it pertains to both projects. Uh, I did hear uh the the young man talked and say that uh, for the small small contractors bonding would not be a issue uh who is 
rep who from the district and the construction management is helping to represent the small contractor, i.e. Uh, minority contractors, black owned contractors. So okay. part of the once they get once they go through the uh, pre qualification and say they're interested and they're qualified, is there anybody specifically going to help uh, support their efforts? Yes. So what we're doing? So we had the conversation um, with um, Mid Atlantic, and one thing we're doing is part of the part of the questionnaire that they're sending out. Part of it will be, are you a minority, are you a minority owned um, business? And what is your anticipation of the minority owned uh, business being distributed, the, the, the actual wages? So that'll, that, that will be part of the process of question it, and we will review that. I personally will sit in with Mid-Atlantic as, as part of when they review that information as well. And is this a, uh, a prevailing wage job, union job, non-union job? What, what's the criteria for employment as well as contractors? Which one is it for that? Mike? Pre prevailing wage um, merit shop project. Merit shop it means exactly what? Merit shop means that anyone is, is eligible to work on, or anyone is um, Permitted to, to, to bid on the project, and it will be a prevailing wage job. Okay. Thank you. I haven't. Hold on one second. And I'm I'm going to allow Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross, you have the floor if you want to ask a question. Moss, my apologies, Mr. Moss. I apologize. Okay, that's okay. How you guys doing tonight? Awesome. Um, now, I, I, would, I heard some of the questions that Brock asked, which I was going to ask the exact same questions. Um, but I do have a question about, is there a minority goal for, that you're trying to achieve? Is there a percentage put into this, into the specs? And um, most of the times I, I heard Mike mention merit. Most of the time when I read merit, I, I take it as it does not have to be union. So, um, and he did explain, you know, anybody can, can bid the job and it is prevailing rate. So, I guess my, my only question I want to know, is there any specific minority goal set in place for this project? Currently, we do not have a, a minority goal. That is something we are discussing and, and working on. We do not have that, uh, a, a set percentage right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions from the floor? No, yeah, it does look like we have one question in the Q and A. Um, it says, "Will there be a need for internet for any construction trailers?" For, I guess for either job. I'm going to defer to Mike or Mike. I, I would assume at some point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we would if we can't get if the internet's not available there, we'll use hotspots on it, but we'll certainly have connectivity. Okay. There's another question. Let me let this person speak. One second. Uh, hold on. Okay, you have the floor. I um Huey in four two. Yes, hi. Good afternoon. Well, good evening, uh, everyone on the call. Uh, thank you again for uh, this information. Um, I, I was actually uh, asking about the, the internet. Um, I uh, am with a um, Comcast business, and we, you know, offer con uh, internet uh, to different construction trailers um, all around the area. So I definitely will be in touch with, um, with you gentlemen to see if... Um, you know, you could utilize some of our services. So um, that's that's about it. So thank you again. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Okay. Are there any more questions in the Q&A, Bob? No. Okay not, okay, not seeing any more. Again, I just want to reiterate, we're, we're encouraging if someone was not able to join tonight, please, 
direct them to our website. This presentation is on our web, will, is on our website currently, and we will have a video of tonight's discussion also posted on our website, as well as our YouTube page. So if anyone was not able to attend, we would encourage you to pass the information along. And again, there, I think there's several opportunities for, for everyone to be a part of this process, and we're looking forward to having full participation. So not hearing any other questions or seeing any other hands, I will, are there any other hands or are we good? Oh, there are two hands, I apologize. I'll go back. Um, I will start from the top from what I can see, Mr. Moss. I sorry, I just I was one more thing I forgot. If you are, if you do need a firm to help you guys set place for um, the minority contractor contracting portion, I do have a firm I can give you that information. So I'm sorry, I have my two year old. She just ran up, but um, if you if you do need a firm, we do that, and they're actually the firm is responsible for helping the city of Harrisburg um, meet those goals, and also Harris, not Harris, the uh, soccer stadium in Chester. They were also they will also work there. So awesome. I, I can send that information to you if you need. If you to. could, if you could, Mr. Moss, could you email me? My is jcuff at wpsd.k12.pa.us. I would love to get that information. I sure will. I'll it's, send it to you. it's on the website also if, if you didn't get a chance to write it down. Yep. Yep. I got you. Thanks right, a lot, thank, man. Thanks again. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Okay. And I have one more hand raised. Okay. You have the floor, Howlands LLC. Yes, good evening, how are you? Good and yourself? I am well. Uh, I am a general contractor, masonry contractor here in the city of Chester. And I just wanted to know uh, as far as the projects that's going forward, how would I be able to apply and be a part of what is going on? Yes, so I, I'm not sure if you were able to hear the beginning portion of the, of the, of the conversation. Um, we have slides up um, and the information is on our website. We'll have okay. the same presentation where it goes through the subcontractors that you're looking for for the curve field. And part of it is masonry, I believe. So you yes. can go on that and you can see the information. Um, and actually we just posted the presentation in, in the chat as well. So if you can link to there, you'll be able to see it. And also, I think there's also, again, you can out submit your information for the East Lansdowne and Evans projects. Send that information also. You'll see information where you can send that to KCBA and they can pass the information along as well. Appreciate that. No problem. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Brock, hold on one second. You have the floor. Uh, it seems like there's a, some type of problem with me typing stuff in the chat room. Sometimes it's disabled and then when it is able for me to chat, it, I, I'm behind, and so I had like three different threads that probably don't make sense because I wasn't able to type it right. Uh, I know you said when I asked the question, who's going to be um, watching over, monitoring minority participation? Um, I know you work in the administrative office, so this project is on site, just like any other construction project. So who's going? Who who is? helping, literally helping with minority contractors in the field. Does, is there anybody monitoring this at all? I know you said you was, but what type of monitoring are you doing after the uh, pre-qualification process? That's something we're still working on, Mr. Brock, to be honest with you. So as we get further along, um, we'll have more information on that. I would hope that you would have an outside entity doing that because I can't see how well, and, 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 and that is something that we did. Actually, that is something that we actually utilized that process when we did Ardmore as well. Um, I went back through some of the past paperwork, and that was something that we, we had actually utilized back when we did that project as well. And was there any participation on that project? I don't recall. I believe there was. I, um, I, just, I, I read through the top level of what, what was the other group of the company that came in and assisted as well. I would like to uh, be a part of that process if at all possible because I, you know, we could talk about it offline, but I, I don't remember any minority participation for the Ardmore project. Okay. 
All right. Good. If not hearing any other questions or seeing any other hands raised, um, again, I thank everyone for coming out tonight. Again, I would just encourage everyone, um, if you know someone, um, please encourage them to review the, the presentation as well as the listen to the discussion we had tonight. And I think we will call this forum adjourned at this particular point. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jeff.